satisfy your need for happiness through your own curiosity with the Ranveer Show. What kind of chat GPT will we see in five years' time? Unpredictable? Well, I would say, you know, the way you think about chat GPT or AI in general is like comparing it to electricity. Right? See, when electricity was invented, right? If I asked you that question at that time, where do you see electricity in the next five years? What would be your answer? Everywhere. It will change every industry, every home, every, every business, everything. Today, if you don't have electricity, can you even think about being in a place where you don't have electricity? That's crazy, right? It sounds absurd. That's how AI, more importantly, then chat GPT has its own, it's a company and there's whatever, it can keep coming up and down, whatever. I'm talking about AI as a principle, AI as a future, right? That is bound to change every single thing that we have. It's like electricity. It'll power everything which is out there. And that is the reason why, you know, I was, I was, in, a, I was in, a col in a college a couple of weeks back and they were like, can you give us some career advice on this thing? And I said, you know, the one advice that I'll give you if you're getting jobs or an interview, talk to the company about what they do and how do they do things. And in their pitch, if you don't hear AI, run away from that company. Oof. Yeah. It's that bad because, and, and I would go one step further. Forget about just the pitch. You want the proof. Okay, you're talking about you're using AI. Show me how you're using AI. Because if it's like this, electricity in, is invented. You're doing business without electricity. Chucky P. Singh, oh, right? Wow. So do you want to go to a place which is manual or a place which has started talking about electricity, even if they don't have it today? It's that easy of a litmus test. Just ask, what do you really do? Go to their website, see. If you don't see the word AI, don't even talk to them. The inverse of that is also true because somebody talks about AI doesn't mean that they have it. So you want to double click and understand, you know, what is, how are they using AI, blah, blah, blah. But at least it's better than somebody being totally oblivious about electricity which just got invented and I'm still, you know, using an old, old model of doing work. Um, hmm. Will open AI topple Google as the world's most used search engine? I, I, I personally don't think so for a simple reason that uh, the most difficult thing to change in the world is human behavior. And human behavior always by design resists change. If OpenAI's answers were a thousand times better and Google was doing nothing about that and you will not get those answers there at all, it would force me to go from one to the other. In fact, there's a really nice book called Crossing the Chasm by Geoffrey Moore. And uh, it actually says, how do you go from early visionaries to early majority? And it says the only way to go from early visionaries, which is the first front tail of the whole Crossing the Chasm, you know, the thing that he draws, to early majority is to go to pragmatic buyers because early majorities are always pragmatic buyers. They don't want to change, right? And go to pragmatic buyers in pain. Now with Google, and you need to understand how Google is designed. Google and Facebook are two fundamentally different companies of how they are run. Or Google and Tesla. Tesla, Facebook, they all are run in the same way. Apple under Steve Jobs was run in that way. What, what is their way of doing things? Move fast and break things. Google is not like that. Google was built by a team of PhDs, right? It was, it was basically Sergey Brin and Larry Page uh, studying a, a, under Motwani Sir in UC Berkeley where they wrote the first algorithm. And it's more, I would say it's more balanced where Google doesn't need to be the first one to do something. That's the DNA of that company. It will test things, it will do A-B testing, it will, like before, uh, before Google rolls out a new feature with a new color, it will have 20 shades of blue, suppose that's what it's trying to roll out, tested by 1 million users each. Apple on the other side will be like, this is the right blue because Steve Jobs is thinking this is the right blue and just roll it out. 
right? So you can actually, you know how, how big of a team created the iPhone? Can you take a wild guess? 28 people. 28 people was the total team. It was, used, it was called Purple, uh, Project Purple. And that's what it was. Google is very, very different. To get things done in Google, there's way more resistance which is out there. And that's by design. I'm not saying one is better than the other because uh, Google is also a very large company and so is Facebook and others. So because something is first by design, Google doesn't have an issue with that. It would rather take a step back because keep this in mind, these algorithms were actually built by a Google engineer, right? It, and, 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 and the whole thing, because they obviously understand it extremely well, which is search. Now, it was done very quickly. And again, full credits to the OpenAI team. And they went ahead and they launched it. But I would say a year, two years, three years down the lane, if people get similar, if not crazily different answers from Google and OpenAI, and it means my behavior to change, to go from Google to a different website, which I don't know about, which is not integrated to my other apps and other ecosystems which are out there, I probably don't wanna do that. Unless it's like, I can feel the pain. Oh my God, every time I'm asking, I'm asking something to Google, I'm getting the wrong answer. And here I'm getting the right answer. That means you have a pain, right? Pragmatic buyer in pain. So if there's pain, then you go the other side. If not, this is the first side which matters. How will the big tech companies actually use AI? Coming back to your question about everyone should be using AI. Now, these guys have obviously been using it for years for multiple purposes. But I'm asking you a more futuristic sci-fi style question in terms of if you're Sundar Pichai now and you're seeing whatever is happening at OpenAI, what do you tell your core leadership about where you want to take the company in the next five years? You know, for the big tech companies, the question is not about how do you use AI. The question is how do you become AI? And let me explain you the difference between the two, right? See, Google has been using AI forever. Every ad that you see is actually given to you using supervised machine learning algorithms of what is the probability you will click on something. And given what is your search history, given your emails, given all the data that Google already has about you. This is something that Google has been using AI forever. So now Sundar Pichai is not thinking about how do I use more AI? It is using AI in pretty much anything and everything which is out there, right? Whether you know it, whether you don't know it, right? Some degree of intelligence absolutely out there. The next evolution is now becoming an AI company where AI becomes the business. Not the business enabler, but the business. With Gemini that they just launched, now they are selling that. They are saying you can use our models, train it based on your data, and based on that, you're able to go and do things. That's exactly what OpenAI is doing. See, think of these LLMs. Meta or Facebook has taken a different route. They said, I will open source it. I will give this to everybody. I will train it and then people can use that, play around with that. Maybe they like us because we are so open. Because Microsoft and Google are closed. You can't see the source code of OpenAI, ChatGPT. You can't see the source code of Gemini, right? But you can see the source code of Llama 2, which is the Facebook's LLM, which is out there, which is totally public. And it's a, it's a, quite, it's a quite powerful uh, and very well-trained uh, you know, model, which is already out there. So the point I'm trying to make there is that if you think about it, like these companies are now in the business of selling platforms on which people can build. A parallel of that is what happened with the compute models with AWS, Azure, and GCP. See, AWS, Amazon's business was not compute. Its business was selling on a website, right? I mean, they're getting buyers and sellers on the same platform, right? Suddenly, when AWS became so big, right, which is like the demand shot up like crazy because they introduced a new concept of flexible computing, which is you pay for whatever compute resources that you use because Amazon already had that for the Black Friday sales that they used to do every year, but that was for one week. And the rest of the week, the compute was useless. So they said, okay, you know what? We'll just open this up and we can run this as a project and became so wildly successful where compute became the business. Today, AWS is a $2 trillion company or Amazon is a $2 trillion company, not because of Amazon.com. It's because of AWS and the kind of free cash flow that that produces. So the point I'm trying to make to you is, Ranveer, that 
because compute became the business and then Azure saw that, Microsoft saw that, said, oh my God, I also have big data centers, I will also go in the cloud business. Google saw that, oh my God, I have Google Cloud, I will do that. Exactly the same thing is now happening to AI. So Sundar Pichai's boardroom and, the, and, and his leadership is right now not talking about where can, we can apply AI. That's a given, that's table stakes. If you don't do that, as I said, you'll die as a company. But the next big evolution is really how do you reinvent Google to be seen as an AI company. Look at Tesla's, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the quarterly earnings call, last quarterly earnings call, which was there. When Tesla's stock went up, it's basically Elon Musk coming and saying, I'm an AI company now, right? Look at Mark on, Zuckerberg. On what basis? Oh, he has arguably one of the largest sources of telemetry of car data, vehicle information. He's putting all of that together, right? Our common friend Dhaval, who, who goes ahead and, you know, obviously helps put this together on the machine learning side of things out there. And if you look at all of that coming together, the sheer raw amount of data and the telemetry that, that Tesla has is unlike any other car company on the planet. Because Tesla has around nine cameras. Every time Tesla is moving, it's a recording from those nine cameras which are out there and it takes different kinds of things from those cameras and throws that into the neural network and then it produces the output, what it's supposed to do, understanding the intent of where you need to go and then decomposes that into, again, the, the, the form of neural network of what, what actions need to be taken. Does the steering need to go left or right? Does the acceleration or brake needs to happen? Right? So the process of creating a self-driven car mm -hmm. gave them access to a lot of data over... The last five yeah, years. Yeah. Now they're using that data to become an AI company. Correct. And selling it to other car companies who no, want to. No, not at all. Why do you need to do that? Just the sheer insights that you can get from there. And then produce that to make the world's most intelligent self-driving car. How do you earn money from that data? Think about it, right? If Tesla can crack the most intelligent self-driving, it can produce every Tesla without a driver's seat. Mm -hmm. Think about what happens with that. Every Uber that you see on the road gets useless, right? If you think about the fact that you can let somebody go in your car and not have them to drive and say, you can watch movies, you can listen to Ranveer's podcast, or you can do whatever the hell you want. How many people would like to be in that car? Hmm. Way too many, right? So the point I'm trying to make is there's too many things that can be done. Again, and this is where I'm going back. The platform is what everybody is chasing to become. These are highways, right? So the infrastructure, and by the way, will they be the companies which win? Not necessarily. When the, think about it like this, right? When refrigerators were invented, tell me the greatest refrigerator company you know in the world, Keventers and here and there, we probably don't even know the names, right? When refrigerators were invented, it was not the refrigeration companies that won. Who won? The beer companies. Coca-Cola won. Pepsi won. You know why? Because now when you could take a Coca-Cola which was chilled, it takes the sales and that skyrockets. Right? So because somebody made the fundamental infrastructure, I told you Google was the first one that actually made this paper, attention is all it takes, right? In an ideal world, Google should have been the first one hmm. to come up with ChatGPT, but that did not happen. So somebody creating the platform, now everybody's betting on the platform because even that definitely will be a big deal, but then there are applications on top of that that companies are right now using. Every you know, thing that you can talk about, whether it's high-frequency trading and financial services with banks, healthcare, and you know, completely revolutionizing how healthcare works, anything, retail, et cetera, et cetera. First principles of business just make human life easier. You'll become mm. richer. Absolutely. So we're at that point, like for example, you gave this Tesla situation where now truly self-driving cars with only three seats could be a possibility instead of the four seats. Any, my, my point. Well, the good news is you can still have four, four seats. Four seats. Everyone no faces each other. Exactly. No steering wheels. If you enjoyed today's clip, make sure you check out these curated playlists that we've made especially for you related to the subject that was spoken about in this clip.